Hello, this is Sean from eBike Marketplace, and I want to do another video quick while it's on my mind because I had some fans yesterday that actually came on the site and had some questions for us. So this is good. I love it. I love it. Uh, Jacob was actually the, the customer who said, just ask some few questions, and you can see it in the comments. And feel free to also help out and you know subscribe to the channel and also ask questions when you need to. So the first question was, where did we get the BMS from? Most of the BMSs come from China. Um, that's where most of the batteries come from. But there are some batteries and there are some BMS systems that come from America. Um, a lot of the motors are stronger in America, as you may notice. They are between 750 watts to 3,000 watts and sometimes even above that. Um, so where we get our BMSs from dictates on what type of battery it is. If it's a stronger battery system, you know, we, we may have to customize the BMS to be okay with the battery. If it's a um, you know, lower battery system and that's like a 350 watt motor, which most of the bikes in China and Europe are, you know, we can get the, the BMS from China. But, so it, it usually depends on the, uh, the application, the motor, the motor strength. Um, the second question was, how do you decide on the right BMS? It's a great question. Um, the, the main things you need to know first is the motor. And then you also want to know the range, how long you want this to last, because having a good BMS is important for that. For example, the balancing. If the, if the battery management system doesn't balance the battery pack, the battery's not going to last very long because you'll have imbalanced cells. And when you have imbalanced cells, the battery is going to fail quite often, actually. <clears throat> the next thing is the type of cells you use. Um, if you have bigger cells, like these 21700s, or if you have smaller 18650s with lower capacity that, that can't put out that much power, you want a BMS that pairs with that. So, for example, if you have um, like a Panasonic cell, and a Panasonic cell is about 2600 milliamp hours, and your BMS, I mean your motor that you're pairing it with is only 350 watts, technically you don't need a high, very discharged BMS. You can go with a smaller BMS. But if you have a massive motor, like a thousand watt motor, and you have um, the motor able to do 40 amps continuous discharge, you want a, a, a stronger BMS system. A lot of those BMS systems either have to be custom made or uh, modified to handle that large load. The last thing is the life. Um, you Picking your BMS, you wanna make sure if you want this to last long, like two or three or four years, you want to make sure your, your BMS has the right parameters. Does it have over voltage condition? Does it have under voltage condition? You know, how, how often can you charge it? How much current can you charge? And that's very important too. Um, the more current, usually the more dangerous the battery becomes. If you want to charge at 10 amps at a time, which is not um, a, a great uh, current to charge at, especially for the lower battery rates, you want to make sure that you understand everything about the battery before you do this. Um, and then the last question was glue batteries versus pack batteries or plastic container batteries. I'm sorry. So what they mean by that is most of the batteries are held together by either glue or this plastic container. Um, for EMP, we choose plastic container. That's almost every battery that we do. We use plastic containers. That's the safer way to go about it. And it's the best way to go about it. And I'll, I'll get into some key things and reason why. Um, so right here, I have a plastic container. And I'll go over this one first. So the plastic container, it separates the cells. It gives it, it gives you that true spacing that you need. And as you can see here, I can slide this through easily and it separates the cell. The reason why this is important is because the wrapping around the cell is like insulator. So if this ever gets cut or if it gets chafed and it touches the cell together, it could spark. So you want to make sure that when you build a battery, you have that space. Now, of course, if you use glue, you may still have that space too, but I'll get into reasons why that that's not always the case. But plastic separates that. The other reason too is, say, when you put this here on top, you already have a perfect base for your nickel tab to be welded. And it's, it's thick enough to be within those constructs and be able to be stable, not move around. You want these batteries, the battery cells, to never really move around. That way the nickel tabs are sturdy and they're there. So we go with plastic containers. That's that's what e-bike marketplace does. We love these things. Um, they're not that expensive um, for the end user. You guys can get them. Um, just make sure that the size is right. So over here, I'll show you why it's a bad 
way to do the glue. Um, it's it's not a horrible. I mean, I've I've seen these batteries before. We've taken a lot of these batteries down. Um, the biggest problem with them really is glue tends to melt when it's heated up, and these batteries get plenty hot, um, as you you may know. Um, they're already inside of containers, and they already draw heat from the uh, the load discharge, and then you have this glue. So the problem with this is sometimes it starts to shift. And when it starts to shift, remember these tabs are all welded down here. And as you can see on this battery, the tab is actually coming to loose. Probably because it's loose. You can see, even I can wiggle this. This is not good. If the tabs ever come this large, you're not getting a solid contact. What you want is you want something like this where it's sturdy. You know, these tabs are plated on here. They're not going anywhere. You want that because the moment that your tabs start to move, not only do you lose the continuity throughout the pack, but it, it starts to become it starts to become dangerous. It really does. Because now you have, and this is where you probably can see where the tabs and the cells are insulated here with this sort of like gray circle. It's insulated because this is the positive side of the battery. So if your nickel tabs are coming up or if they're just loose, your battery's not gonna last very long and you'll be sending in your battery hopefully to us for rebuild or repair but this is one of the main reasons why um, e-bike marketplace has been successful over the years because we see batteries like this we, we learn from batteries like this we're able to take this apart and say okay what can we do to make this better um, the other thing is the the, the, the balancing wires Having it like this is terrible. Um, we see batteries come back like this all the time. You want to do everything in your power to make sure that this is not the case. You want to take these batteries down, um, take these battery, uh, take the battery wires down, the wire harness. You want to make sure that they're sturdy, that they're they're not like this, like spaghetti. Because what's going to happen is while this battery starts to move around inside, one of these wires may come dislodged, and if that happens the BMS can no longer monitor that array of cells. So each wire is responsible for not one single cell, but an array of cells. This is an 8P pack. You can see by how it's uh, configured. So if one of these wires are dislodged, it can no longer manage those array of cells. And then when you have that issue, you have that problem, what's gonna happen is, the BMS is going to either A, shut off and shut the entire battery off and you're not going to be able to use it. That's a good BMS. Uh, or B, a bad BMS would still allow you to discharge. Maybe the BMS is not functioning right. And now you discharge your battery further than what the under voltage limits would you know, allow or prevent. So if that's ever the case, then the battery is done. Because a lot of times when a battery goes below the under voltage discharge level, you can't bring it back up anymore. So you'll probably have, you maybe even have seen this where you have an older battery that you either forgot to charge or you couldn't charge because of the season or maybe you went on vacation for a while and now you go to charge and it doesn't work. That's a lot of times because the battery is so low that the, the charger that you currently have can't recognize it, won't be able to do it. And then it's hard to fix that because a lot of people figure, okay, well I can just charge it up and it's gonna work. No, a lot of times you have to go in and use a lower level current, like maybe 100 milliamps to, to a volt of, of current to try to charge the single cell, not the, the BMS, you have to bypass that and charge up the single cell of those, those batteries to try to get it to wake back up. So hopefully this information is helpful. Um, we, you know, we, like I said, we get a lot of these batteries that we rebuild, that's why we have a lot of experience, but hopefully this information is helpful. Please feel free to comment under this video if you want to, you know, if you have a specific question or if you want me to do more videos in terms of the batteries or if you have, you know, any insight to what your experiences may have been and maybe I can help you with that as well. But I'm gonna be doing these videos for maybe once a week or so, you know, as, as they dictate. And I want you guys to just keep asking me questions and I'll, I'll try to come on and give you guys some information about it. But again, this is Sean from eBike Marketplace. I wanna thank you guys again.